dungeon. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the dungeon. I know it's been um, a little bit of time. It took us a, a minute to fix the annealer, but it is now fixed. I keep my annealer running at a thousand degrees, and that's like a perfect temperature for um, holding your beads and for uh, keeping anything hot that you want to take back out of the oven and then use in something else. So a thousand degrees I always find to be a really good magic number for the annealer to be set at. Sometimes, you know, I have a hard time speaking. Say that. Um, you know, I have this, uh, I call my condition verbal dyslexia. So my words get mixed up very easily. Sylvia, I hope you're watching because this one is for you. Let's review the dots. Precise dot placement is not easy. It looks easy, but it takes a lot of time and patience and practice to put every dot on perfectly even and the same size. Let us begin our precise dot placement demo. See you in a bit. Okay, so, you know, there are these stringers that you can buy, and that's fine, but I really tend to like to make my own. So uh, there is a video where I am uh, talking about stringers. You can find that one, but making your own stringers is really the best way about it. On this bead, what I'm gonna do, because we're just talking about dots, is uh, I'm just gonna build this up, and there will be, um, fast motion, slow motion, all sorts of motion happening here as I work away. And I'm letting that bead, you know, cool down a little bit. And then I will add some more just to make it a little bigger because this one is just real simple, real simple four dots, okay? You always wanna start simple. Um, you just wanna learn how to put four perfect dots on, just four dots all the same size. That's all you're really looking for to this. So, you know, like I said, you have to make a lot of these. I've made hundreds of these. Now, see where the flame is? Um, that's first position. Now I'm in second position right here. And in second position, I can just grab a little bit of the heat from the tip of the glass rod and the heat won't travel up the rod. And that will allow me to drop and come up in the flame and twist and lift and I'm heating now and then I come down and I just gently drop the same amount and come up the same way and do the twist and then I flip my my glass rod every time that I do this quick cutting motion and I'm ready to put another one on you'll see the tip of my rod there the orange one it has this kind of crook on it, and I use that to help me with the next one because that's just the amount of glass I need to heat up for the next drop. And you're also pushing it. See how I was moving it up and down? That's what you're doing. Okay, these dots are not perfectly four place dots. So me being who I am, I try to use a butter knife, especially if I have nice dots. A butter knife is really helpful right after you put your little um, bit of glass on because what you can do is heat each one up individually and gently push it, just gently push it. And you have to make sure that only that dot is hot, okay? So you can see I'm gently kind of pushing certain dots in certain, you know, little bit I'm pushing it where I want it to go all right there we have it I've said it okay now uh, let's move on and the heating is really important you have to have the most even heating possible so everything heats up all at once or you're in trouble and everything has to cool down all at once it all has to look the same heat uh, the whole time that it's heating and cooling. So let's try a stringer, 
all right, just for the hell of it. Um, so stringer, see how I'm just pointing at the flame with that stringer? That's all I need. And look at how close my bead is. I, I don't even have to move my bead barely. My bead is right underneath. And what I'm doing is I'm just coming in and grabbing just a little teeny bit of heat and dropping it on there. I have plenty of time to drop it. And then when I lift up into the heat and I'm only lifting up a little bit, that's when my glass rod just comes right off and then I'm away from the heat again. So try that a couple times. You can try that like all over a bead if you want to with all different colors. And it actually comes out real cool putting tiny dots all over your bead and not caring exactly where you know they are. So here is our, um, our second bead. This is gonna be bigger, okay? So I'm gonna build it a little differently. I'm gonna build this probably, I think three or four um, beads wide and then I'll build it up in two or three or four however many more discs that I need to kind of like you know fill it out without having to do it perfectly and then I'll heat that up real quick just enough to roll out on the table very gently and then that gives me the width that I want for the bead. And I'm gonna add this glass a little differently from normal. I'm just gonna add it and see how I am kind of, I'm in first position. First position is just being perpendicular to your mandrel. So you get the most heat out of um, your glass rod. You notice that when I'm putting on the dots, I am not in first position, okay? When I add my detail, I am in what I call, I, I, I don't know about anybody else, but I call it second position, okay? And second position is when you're at a 45 degree angle to your glass bead. And I always do that on the side okay with the the uh with with the mandrel because this is where i get just a little bit just this is where you <laughs> i'm sorry this is where you decide how much heat you're going to get on the end of your glass rod and drop it and then you pull it out a little circle that little whip around that's important that um, takes all that the stringers and the weird stuff and things may be flipping over out of the, uh, the whole game, okay? Learn that swirl after you lift up. And everything, again, you know, it all happens very close to the flame. The bead isn't going to heat the flame if it's right next to it. Or the flame isn't going to heat the bead if it's right next to it. The only thing that is going to heat up the bead is the flame. So you have to make sure that your bead is not actually in the flame. So you may have to look at things from a different angle too to see exactly what's happening when you lay down your dots. And it's something you want to do, you'll, you'll want to try to do quicker and quicker. And what I did there was I added um, dots of a transparent lavender. And I just thought I'd have a little fun with that to give a little bit of depth. Uh, so when I put this next round of dots on, they'll kind of be floating a little bit. And I'm not putting these dots on perfectly, okay? I, I hope you can see that. I'm, I'm shaky. <laughs> You know, uh, I, I'm putting them on the best I can. So my whole attitude is I try to get the dots on perfectly even, and, you know, and perfectly spaced out. If they're slightly off, if one is slightly off center, then I'll put the rest of them slightly off center to make more of an interesting pattern. So I hope you, you get where I'm going at with that. The dots don't always have to be right in the center of each dot. Have fun with these dots. Just don't let them touch each other. Okay, here we're going with a little bit of stringer work on the side. 
loving working in the center of the mandrel because look at how close up I can get. And again, this is just because I am shaky and you know, I need the most amount of stability as I can uh, to put the glass on. So here's gonna be our last round of dots. Notice I'm only just grazing the heat on those. I'm not fully melting them in yet. I wanna melt all this in together. So here go our little dots. Sometimes I'll lay a little tiny dot down and it might get stuck and then I'll just lift up and pull it off. And then, you know, just keep going. Don't try to put another dot on that tiny dot. It doesn't help. All right, that looks good. So we are ready to heat everything up. Watch how this is heating up. It's heating up very evenly, evenly, evenly. And you see that everything just, as soon as it's hot, don't let it get to the point of sagging and uh, everything will be good. And last but not least, I wanted to put these little black dots uh, on top. And I, I did kind of mess these up a little bit. The first one, I'm like, oh, totally hit it off center. So that's when I'm like, okay, all these black dots will be off center. That is a classic, like me thing that just, what can I say, you know? I'm shaky. But this is looking really good. And uh, I hope you listen to the five minute lecture afterwards because I go into, um, I'm not really sure, but I do talk about, <laughs> I do talk about the helpfulness of uh, what am I trying to say real quick here of being in first and second position? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Awesome. So I'm going to put some stuff on the other side and if you don't want to listen to the lecture, that's fine too. I totally get it. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so if you don't, thank you for watching and uh, I hope you get something out of how to do precise dot placement. And if you need to, you can also refer back to my Dots 101, where I, I go through this for the first time. And there we have it, our second bead. And now stay tuned for our five minute lecture. I know we talked about it before, but this is my MO. It's this whole, oops, it's this whole thing that I do, right? It's all about this merry mixture of just the right heat. You want this to be stiff while you're adding this hot drop. A big thing that I also see people do is just their bead is just too hot. Or this is, there's too much of this hot or the bead is too hot. You want to make sure that that bead is always cool or not moving hot. You know what I mean? Anyway, I'll just take this off right here and now. <laughs> this one I thought was very interesting. Let's talk about this one real quick. I do like working in the middle. That really, really has helped me out because what I do, right, is I work in what we call first position, which is this, is to me is first position, okay? In first position, the flame is focused on the rod. And then position two, and I do this finger thing, I curl my finger, because I'm shaky, and it's hard for me to, uh, just kidding, <laughs> it's hard for me to get control of the glass sometimes and make a perfect pattern. And no, not all my patterns are perfect, but they look good because I have the most control I can under the situation that I'm in. 
So what I do is I will curl my finger. I'll do little things like curl my finger around this. And now I'm in second position. Okay, I'm in second position. So now I can heat up. Let's see. Let me put this bead back on here. So I can heat it up. I can get real close. Don't, you know, don't hold way back here because you don't have any control back here. But get as close as you can. Get some control there. You know, to me, this is like my writing pen. This is how I write. But I got my little finger looped over this and that really stabilizes my, uh, my hand. So when I go up into the flame and then turn the glass and press it down and go and lift up in the flame and turn it around and you know all that stuff I have control because I, I, I got the curl sometimes what I'll do is I'll just rest my hand on it if I want to go straight up and down because I can't do that with a curl a curl I'm usually adding at a 45 degree angle or I'm adding right you know little dots on top I can pull that off but if I'm trying to put a dot on straight up and down I need to heat this way first to get the right amount and then come out of the flame you know and then I'm pressing down like this and I lift up and into the flame and I give it the swirl okay you have to figure out what is the most comfortable for you yeah that's is this thing about um, being in second position when you add your detail. I think that's the best way to go because the heat does not travel up the glass rod when you're in second position. In first position, yeah, the heat's traveling up the rod, so you're getting as much glass as you can. That's when you're really building up the bead and adding a lot of glass at once. You're in first position that whole time. Practice, practice, practice. Do your best. Be happy with the results no matter what because they're all one of a kind and they're all yours and you made that magic happen. What we do here is like making magic. Who does this, right? Not many people. Flame work. For us flame workers, this is our craft, you know? This is like our cauldron and we're mixing and doing stuff and so that's kind of uh, how I see it at least. Have fun make the magic happen and we'll see you on the next episode of flame working 101 point something thanks for watching and sylvia i hope this helps you let me know in the comments and we'll talk to you guys soon